these Pioneer HPM 100s may be one of the best speakers ever built. Now, before we get into the HPM 100s, if you enjoy this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And hey, if you haven't yet, be sure to subscribe to the channel because we have so much great content coming out this year. And one more thing, I have a question for you guys. I want to know in the comments, did you own a vintage speaker? Do you currently own one? Uh, and what was it and why do you enjoy that speaker? Now let's get into a little history about the HPM 100s. The Pioneer HPM 100s were built to do one thing, and that was to be a better sounding speaker than the famed JBL L 100s. A speaker that was later made famous, and you probably all have seen it, the Maxell blown away cassette ad. That little speaker on the side is a JBL L 100 if you've never seen one before. So the story starts back with a guy named Bart LeCanthy. So in 1960, he became the vice president of engineering at JBL. It was under his tender that the JBL L100, the most popular speaker in its day, was manufactured. However, in 1970, JBL was getting bought out. Now this caused LeCanthy to leave because he could not agree with the direction that the company was going in. Now that takes us to 1975. Pioneer had hired him as the vice president of research and development. Now Pioneer decided they were going to give a massive budget to LeCanthy to develop a speaker that would compete and be better than his last development, the L100. It was then that he used his expertise and experience to design, even down to the smallest detail, what was to become the HPM 100s. Even the name itself bears a striking resemblance to the L100 and that was no accident. As the HPM100 was designed to be an improved JBL L100. At the time, Pioneer considered themselves to be the number one hi-fi manufacturer in the entire world. Touting they had one single activity and that was hi-fi and they had over 40 years experience with sound. They also sold their products to millions of audiophiles in 104 countries. Quote, in hi-fi, there's only one language, and that's perfection. The HPM 100s retailed at $500 and were part of the 1976 to 1977 Pioneer catalog that featured 62 new models. This includes the Spec 1 preamp and the Spec 2 amp, the SA 9900, 7500, 8500, and 9500, the SX 1250, and the entire SX 50 series, and even the Quad QX 747 and 949. All right, so now we're gonna get a little bit into what is actually on the HPM 100, and we're gonna start with the Super Tweeter. So that is this guy right over here. Now, what's special about the Super Tweeter design is it has no dome, magnet, voice coils, or any moving parts at all. The frequency response to this driver ranges up to 25 kilohertz, exceeding the capacity of the human ear. Now, over time, a lot of people have come to me and said, I think my Super Tweeter's blown. And I just pretty much tell them it's not the super tweeter. Uh, you just can't hear that high because to me, this was more of a gimmick because I can't hear it. And I don't think many human ears can actually hear anything that comes out of the super tweeter. All right, now we're gonna look at the mid-range driver. The size of the mid-range driver was precisely calculated at four inches in diameter as to match the directional characteristics of the entire speaker. Though it is small in diameter, it features a larger magnet with a lightweight cone and edgewise voice coil. It demonstrates that quality, not diameter, is more important. The voice coil, voice coil assembly, and cone in the tweeter are bonded with epoxy resin to help increase the rigidity of the entire vibrating configuration, aiding in clean, low distortion performance. All right, now on to the tweeter, this guy right here. The tweeter has a diameter of one and three quarter inches. The carbon fiber cone of the woofer is coated with a special resonance dampening compound to widen the frequency range and smooth out response. Because of this, it can respond more truthfully to low frequency impulses. Now let's take a look at the woofer. It features a 12 inch diameter woofer and a six and an eighth inch magnet with a pure copper ring. These features were intended to eliminate noticeable distortion. 
Now let's talk about the crossovers. The crossover was designed so the frequencies at the driver crossover level overlap in order to prevent the separation of musical tones and assure the unified distribution of acoustic energy over the entire frequency range. The crossovers have two potentiometers at the top right of the speakers, allowing the user to control the volume of both the tweeter and the mid-range drivers. The enclosure is compromised of dense particle board. Using ported one quarter inch baffle board and one three sixth inch chipboard sides, back and top and bottom. The enclosure also has fiberglass insulation stapled to the interior, allowing minimal sound pressure to be absorbed by the cabinet itself. The outside of the cabinet is finished with a thick, fine grain furniture grade walnut veneer and has a removable black fabric grill. This cabinet is definitely one of my favorite. This is this is my personal speaker out of my office here at the store. Uh, so one of my favorite looking and sounding speakers of all time. But it's it's massive. The HPM 100 weighs in at 58 pounds 14 ounces. Now this was intentional as the weight of the cabinet contributes to the rich sound the speaker produces. Although it is considered to be a bookshelf speaker, it was clear that it must be a floor standing speaker with a stand because of the immense size and weight. Now, what can I stand what I suggest using with the HPM 100? So I'm not a big fan of the original stands because I feel like the speakers kind of slide off them. So I recommend the KLH Model 5 stands. They're solid steel. They have padding on them to protect your speaker and that speaker is not going anywhere. I think the rise is the correct degree and it just looks great. It matches perfectly. So that's what I use as far as stands. Now we'll also be sure to link those KLH Model 5 stands below. Now, Pioneer designed the 50 series starting at, let's say the 950, 1050, and 1250, as well as the 80 series, the 980, 1080, 1280, and 1980, uh, a receiver that we recently did a video on. These were made distinctly for the HPM 100s. If matched with one of these receivers, particularly the SX1980, the HPM 100 is not only well known for its excellent sound reproduction at low volumes, but also for its superior performance at higher volumes with almost no noticeable distortion or change in output sound quality. Now the HPM 100s are the most popular of the HPM series. There was quite a few other varieties and even an alternative HPM 100. Those being the clear HPM 100s. These were the display models that were manufactured to have a clear plexiglass enclosure versus the solid wood fiberglass enclosure. Though they look interesting, they have a thinner, lower quality sound output compared to the wood enclosure. Now there were three versions of the HPM 100. So there was the 100 watt version, the HPM 100A. Then they introduced the HPM 100B, which is this one, and the HPM 100C. Now both of those have a 200 watt maximum wattage. And you'll know the difference because of this silver ring over the base port on the front of the speaker. So if it doesn't have the silver ring, that's the 100 watt max version. Now, if you didn't have the $500 that the HPM 100s were, there were other variations. And if you wanted to go even bigger, you could do that as well. So let's start near the bottom and just show you some of the other alternatives in the HPM series. So we're gonna start with the HPM 60. This was a smaller speaker that scaled the woofer down from 12 inches to 10 inches. It's also a 60 watt four-way speaker and it retailed at $225. The HPM 40, it has a 10 inch woofer as well, but it eliminated the mid range driver. The HPM 40 also has a cheaper vinyl finish that mimicked veneer instead of a true walnut veneer. These three way speakers retailed at $150. All right, now we talked about the ones that were below the 100. Now let's talk about the upgrades. If you wanted to spend a little bit more, get a little bigger, uh, that would be the HPM 150. The HPM 150 was intended to be an improvement upon the HPM 100. It contained the exact same mid-range and tweeter drivers as the HPM 100. The super tweeter design was modified, mounted on top of the cabinet and projecting 360 degrees instead of 180. The diameter of the woofer was increased to 15 inches but it had foam surrounds which rotted away over time. This is also cited as an engineering inferiority when compared to the HPM 100's grease cloth surrounds with carbon fiber cones. There was also a difference in cabinet quality. Like the HPM 40's, vinyl was used 
as a finish instead of veneer. Now, a few years later, they introduced the HPM 700s and the HPM 900s. The HPM 700 was comparable to the HPM 60, a smaller HPM 900 with this 10 inch woofer. The tweeter and mid range drivers on the HPM 900 and the HPM 700 contained individual metal grills to protect the cones. These two speakers featured another new super tweeter design, one that more closely matched the 180 degree projection of the HPM 100. The woofers were constructed with graphite, a cheaper and stiffer composite material, and like the HPM 150, had foam surrounds that rotted away over time. And even worse, these are the hardest speakers to re-foam in the history of honestly any speaker. Half the time those cones are going to break when you go to refoam them. So that's one thing as a repair center that we saw uh, with the 700s and 900s is they're almost impossible to refoam. And also like the HPM 40 and HPM 150, they were vinyl instead of veneer. There were also a few other speakers that we didn't really get into in the HPM series. These speakers included the HPM 30, the HPM 50, the HPM 70, the HPM 110, the HPM 200, the HPM 300, the HPM 500, the HPM 1100, and the HPM 1500. When planning this out, I really didn't know that there were this many versions of the HPM. I mean, I knew about the 40s and the 60s and the 100 and the 150 and the 200, but all these other ones, I really didn't even know they were a thing. I don't know if they weren't sold in the US or if they were at just different times, uh, but that's actually a lot more HPMs than I even knew existed. Now by 1981, it all came to an end because Pioneer discontinued the HPM series. It was Lacanthe's vision and really the competition with himself that made the HPM series so successful and to be timeless. I mean, this is a series that is still highly regarded as one of the best speaker series ever made. What do you guys think? Yeah, so it's funny that like the super tweeters, that's like the number one thing people think are broken with their Pioneer. And it's usually that nobody can hear it. It doesn't make any sense. So it's like a super high It's a frequency. gimmick. It's just yeah. a gimmick. Like, mm -hmm. oh yeah, this speaker can go to 25,000 hertz or what, you can't hear your, that. Your anyway, dog can your hear do it. It's a great speaker for dogs. <laughs> there you go. The number one dog speaker in the world. At the time, Pioneer considered themselves to be the number one. I just gotta stop doing that. Stop doing that. <laughs> Keep doing that. All right, the HPM, I'm gonna try this. It stands for High Polymer Molecular. Yeah, I think that's right. Right, is that good? <laughs> polymer was kind of weird. Polymer, polymer? Polymer. Okay. 